Hey guys, this is Zach Hamel, and I am back with another tutorial video. Today I'm going to show you how to use something that Roblox recently released, actually not too long ago. And I'm going to show you how to use Smooth Terrain. It's a new feature that they released, it can easily be accessed in the studio, and it's quite easy to use as well once you just dive into it. Here's the blog article, you guys can go into the blog and read it if you want. So I think that Smooth Terrain is a massive breakthrough in the Roblox development ecosystem and I think it's going to help I think it's going to help people get very far in making games with a realistic, natural, high quality and just just in general better looking environment. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this tutorial started. So, let's All right. So, now here I have open a little place um it's got, we have a little um, kind of ocean, got a couple of islands here, the beach, and some foothills and mountains, and then you got like a little bridge right here, so nothing really that great, nothing really amazing here. So we're going to make this look a little bit better by converting it into smooth terrain. Now keep in mind, once you convert it into smooth terrain, you can't convert it back to the legacy terrain, which is shown here or um, voxel terrain, as other people like to call it. So you, so it's all, forever going to remain in smooth terrain. So to, to convert this into smooth terrain, we're going to go up here to the terrain tab and go over here and click convert to smooth. And then to confirm, just click con convert. And see, now in just an instant you have, you can already see it looks a little bit more natural here. I think that's really cool. So I'm going to show you guys step by step how to use these smooth terrain tools that are shown here. Some of you, this might just, this might not look very familiar, but we'll go through each of these tools one by one. So first we're going to begin with the add tool. So <clears throat> this is kind of basic. You can kind of mold your own terrain here. You can maybe do some writing, whatever you want. Lots of cool stuff you can make here. So, when you notice, if you notice, if you move the mouse and if you kind of rotate your camera a little bit, there's a little um, plane grid here. So, if you move to like kind of the side here, say we want to get like kind of a flat sort of front direct view of our place. Um, the grid is going to look, it's going to make you draw your terrain upside down. I mean, not upside down, I mean up and down, kind of vertically. If, say, if we, like, if we make it like this or something, it'll be diagonal. So, just draw whatever you want there. If you look at, you can look at it from the top or bottom, then you can just draw it flat on the ground. All right. So that's pretty basic, and also you can you can also adjust the size of it to make it bigger. So you can see it's, cover, it's um, very quick and easy. Just draw out your terrain, and you can also adjust the strength. Um, if you adjust the strength to make it really high, it kind of draws it out a lot faster. Then if you make it slow, it doesn't really draw draw it as much, and it's a little bit slower here too, much slower. Yeah, so you can also adjust the shape to draw it instead of in a round form. You can do it in like a square form or whatever. And also, you can change the material too. You can draw some sand here. All right, now we have the go back up into terrain and we have the subtract tool. It works pretty much the same way as the add tool, except it's pretty simple. It just takes away some stuff that you might not like. And there's also a grid for this too, so it's a little bit more symmetrical, it's a little bit more, just a little bit more organized, I guess. So I don't like all this stuff right here, so I'm just gonna kind of undo everything here real quick. Alright, so now we just have our normal terrain again. Now we're gonna do the paint tool. Um, if you've worked with the uh, legacy terrain a lot, you kind you know about the material paint tool. 
This works about, this works pretty similar to that, except you can just choose your material. So just paint like some sort of brick floor here. Just like the add and subtract tool, you can adjust the size. And you can adjust the strength too. It doesn't really make that much of a difference with the strength. And you can adjust the shape. And you could check auto here. Hmm, maybe I guess not. That's a little bit weird. So let's just undo everything here again. That's the material paint tool. It's kind of basic. Say so you want to paint some sort of rocky thing here. And yeah, that's kind of the paint tool, so it's pretty nice and easy to use. It works similar to the material paint tool with the Legacy Terrain. Except you can adjust the shape too, and the strength. So I think that's pretty nice. Now if you want a little bit more of a gradual approach, you can use the Grow and Erode tool for adding and subtracting a little bit more terrain. Here's the Grow tool. You can just like the Add and Subtract tool in the paint. You can adjust the size and strength, sorry, and the shape too. So if we just want to put it here, might want to grow some terrain. And yeah, you got a little bit of a hill here and I think it just looks nice and smooth and natural. You can adjust the shape of it too. You have some more like corners and edges. And you can also use the plane lock and you can see that grid appears. So you can only grow terrain that might be symmetrical with this plane right here. And let's say if maybe if you don't like this, if you think you might have grown a little bit too much, we can use the erode tool. It works almost exactly like the grow tool, but just does the opposite thing. You can just simply shrink this down. I think it looks really cool. And next, we have the smooth tool. As you can see, we notice we might have some corners here, we might have sharp, like, kind of wedges here. If you just kind of want to smooth this area out a little bit in the mountains too, just use the smooth tool. You can see it already nice and effectively smooths, smooth, smoothens out everything. <laughs> and there you go. I think that's pretty nice. You can see it's already much more natural looking. And we can also do the same with the mountains and you get a pretty nice result. See much more smooth. We don't have a lot of corners, we don't have wedges. It might shrink it a little bit, but you can always adjust it with the other tools. And see we just got a much more natural looking environment. So I think the smooth tool is nice and useful. Alright now you can see these mountains look almost like you can't even, they look like they were never even created with the legacy terrain in the first place. Next tool I want to show you guys is the region tool. It's right here, and it works pretty similar to inserting a part in the studio. So first we're going to begin by clicking where we want to select our area in the terrain. And maybe just expanding a little bit, just whatever, just covering all of the areas you want to be selected. Oops and kind of configured. Just gonna get everything into a little box here. Just like kind of, hmm, just like resizing a part. And now we have everything selected. First let's say we want to maybe move it up a little bit. Like, maybe move it up into the air somewhere. <laughs> we can also uh, resize it. Maybe make it like some pretty tall mountain or something all the way down here. You can also rotate it just like working with a part. I think it's nice and useful. And what's also really cool, you are never able to do this with the uh, Legacy Train, you can copy and paste what you have selected. First just click copy just to make sure you want this to be pasted. And then just, it's just like cloning, just simply move it away from here. 
and then just put it wherever you want. It's more like uh, duplicating rather than copying and paste, but I, th I think they're kind of both the same. And if you don't really like that being there, just delete it. Very simple, and just one click of a button. So I think that's really cool. You can do lots of stuff with this. So that's the region tool. Just basically selecting, box selecting uh, regions, and then just either moving them, resizing them, or rotating them. I think that's pretty cool. Now the last tool I want to show you guys is the generate tool. It works pretty similar to the generate tool that was used for the legacy terrain. Just simply go generate here. There are lots of options here, lots of adjust adjustions, lots of uh, things here you can configure. <laughs> and well, there is a lot of things to configure here. I'm not sure if I could make um if I could not sure if I should show you exactly how to use every single one of these, but I do encourage you to experiment and play around with these. Just see what works best for you. Um, and then with it you can just generate some a really nice environment. So once you've kind of once you like everything, I'm just gonna leave it kind of the way it is. You can click generate and to confirm, just say generate terrain, and then click generate. So it might take a little bit of a second. It will get rid of all the old terrain that you didn't want, so beware of that. It's going to be filling some holes, coloring map, drawing terrain. This might take a second. Might take just a moment here. Alright, it's been drawing out the terrain. I think it's actually a little bit quicker than the old generate tool. And just make, just kind of expanding the map about lakes, and there you go. This is your new terrain that you've generated. I think it looks pretty nice for the most for the most part. Of course, you can configure whatever you want here. You can maybe uh, smooth out some parts if you think they look a little bit sharp. Smooth out this like hill over here, or you can erode some areas want to make holes like literally <laughs> and you can grow it if you don't like it and you can grow terrain anywhere else as well even in the water which is a little bit weird though <laughs> and you can also paint it to a different material and not to mention there's the subtract tool and then there's that add tool and you can even regenerate so, that's kind of it guys, that's all I wanted to show you. I hope you all found this video very helpful, and if you have any questions or concern, feel free to leave it in the comments, or you can message me on Roblox. And if you have any feedback, also leave it, back in the leave it down in the comments. And please remember to give this video a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it, it would really help my channel a lot. And if you found this helpful, if you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe. So, that's kind of it guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next tutorial video.